Dan. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second New Well Shared Curation Show. Um, yes, if you're new, welcome. If you're old, welcome back. Um, if you don't know what's going on, this is a, um, a pre-curated show. So we have four judges who will each work through two posts um, through the duration of the show, um, talking about them. So you can learn some things, what kind of stuff gets you upvoted. We're all experts as well from Steemit and Whale Shares. We've been here a long time. Um, and then at the end of the show, oh yeah, that's the post. See, this is at the end of the show. We will um, we will take the mics off and we can all talk. So some of you might have heard that the show was an hour late. This is a, this is a terrible tragedy, and I need to apologise on behalf of that post because if you look, that post has got the wrong information on it, and um, that post is feeling very very embarrassed at the moment. But um, I think we should all just be uh, be kind to that post. And, um, and make it feel better. Anyway, um, so what else have we got for you this week? Oh, okay. Um, halfway through the show, I've got a huge new project that I've been talking about for months, and probably none of you thought it was ever going to happen, but it is happening. Um, and I've launched a new platform today, so I'll talk to you about that halfway through. But um, as we're running a little bit late, it's probably best to jump straight into things. So we will start with... Linda. Oh, yes. And if, if you're new and you don't know what goes on here, if you stay to the end, listen to everything and give me your details, you'll get some free um, tokens to give yourself whale efforts. So um, it's well worth listening to the end. Um, but anyway, over to you, Linda. Sorry? Over to you. Oh, oh, God, that was early. I can't speak for long because then my, my browser freezes. Like, wait, give me a second. Uh, well, uh, did I do the wrong link? I think I gave the comment link, but that's okay, guys. You have it's the post anyway. Um, I'm gonna by speaking intervals. I really got the uh, wait, wait. I really got to this is the hit. You hit me, took me by surprise, Nick. Uh, <laughs> This is a post of Nikki, or not you, Nick. And it's an amazing song. It's a comeback EP, as you can see. I like the upbeat sound of it. It's really amazing. You should listen to this, guys. And if I freeze, that's what you have to do, guys. This is about how sometimes, if you read, oh, there's a little bit of uh, description of the uh, EP, and it's how sometimes we get so trapped in our everyday situations, you know, the grind or the rat race, whatever you call it, that it seems helpless or really depressive. And it's about this is fighting it and moving on, and I think the music is really great for it. You have to listen to this song. I'll give you time, guys. And I think this is... I follow this artist. He's one of my, my uploaded posts in the curation I do on myself, and he is making amazing music not only this one but everything he makes i really love and you don't have to like a specific genre of music because i, I follow a couple of people that have different kinds of music and i think it's really cool to listen to something that's on the blockchain so give it a trial go guys and tell me what you think Whilst we're on the subject of music, and I'll come back to the post, I've just noticed that Atom Collector Records is in here. Now, um, I'm not sure if it's a he or a she, but they um, kindly commented on my last week post about getting music on the show. Um, so what we're hopefully going to be doing in the future is um, having a soundtrack, being able to pick some tracks, and if there's something like this post that Linda has picked, we'll be able to queue up the audio beforehand and have it playing, that kind of stuff. So hopefully we'll sort that out. Um, I do need to have a, a decent chat with Atom Collector Records because um, I'm not very techy and I need to work out how to do this. I've no idea if, even whether I need to buy those things that he suggested or whether they are downloads. Um, so, so we can talk about that as well. But anyway, sorry, back to your post, Linda. Um, back to my post. Yep, yeah, I can hear Okay, I'm just making sure. Um, I actually listened to some of it 
um, while you were still presenting it, and I have to agree with you, it is pretty upbeat, and I like that it's like, I would also describe it as easy listening, something to listen to while you're driving in the car as well. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. Personally, I like the fact that they give a little bit of an introduction to the song, what the song is about. A lot of artists don't do that. Um, some people post the lyrics, but they don't really give you insights of, of where it's truly coming from. And, and I think that kind of hits home for me personally. I, I appreciate that on the post. I think uh, because I was taken by surprise, I can do it justice. I think it's an amazing dance song, but yes, you could also just sit and listen to it. And I, I like the variety of it, you know. You could make it uh, a club music and you can make it like a home home place where you could just sit down, you know, and you, you're you on your own, you know, how we all do those. I don't know if we all do that, but when I'm alone, I, I do some weird shit, so... I dance a little bit interest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I can't listen to it now due to the recording, but I really look forward to listening to it as soon as the show's done. It's it's I'm seeing the phrase nice um nice groove. I, I thought I thought of it as a sort of mellow groove sound or a mellow is it dance? I don't know. What would you how would you describe it? Oh, it says they're trance drum and bass. Okay, that's too technical for me. To me it's just like my mellow dancey electronic music um but it was nice it was some it was some i don't know I, I, is, is, is the train track um synonymous with with this with the the sound of the music because it's quite sort of regular and, and ongoing are you, are you are you on a train when you're listening to this or am i reading too much into it as usual i think you just have to be in a car i don't think uh the train driver <laughs> As <laughs> the person who drives the train <laughs> would listen to that kind of music, <laughs> but but I just don't imagine a train driver do that. But a, a regular car driver would probably. It's pretty soft when it comes to electronic music too. So it, I feel like it would appeal to almost anybody. So it's journey music, and there's nothing to be gained by being in a steam train when you're listening to it. Uh, well, it's well, sure, it's train. I was just gonna say. Um... Trance music is normally associated with a deeper journey of self and maybe the train track symbolizes the journey that the music will take you on, <laughs> depending on any inebriance taken while listening to the music. Um, but, you know, interesting train of thought, literally. You can play around with that. Thank you, Breeze. You've, um, you've, you've made my point sound very credible. Your brain is obviously still working this week, like last week, so that's good. Um, but yeah, overall, a great post, I think. Um, and if you like it, like we do, be, be generous with it and give it an upvote. I think um, Krista will also give it. I don't know how many tokens she's giving it now each week, but you automatically get some from her, her witness account as well. So um, so it's, uh, it's a good thing to be selected by us if, if you're not familiar with how this works. Does anyone know? Did Krista clarify how many tokens this week? Um, it's going to be 100 tokens or 100% uh, both on the post bill this week, but sorry, next week it will be 50%. Okay, so last of the big spenders this week and then next week a bit less. Okay, brilliant. Um, um, yeah, nice selection, Linda. Um, let's move on to Cotterin. Yeah, shall we? Actually, this week I decided to um, follow your steps, Nick, and pick uh, new people uh, to present their posts tonight. And this is one of the new people uh, that, I, that I picked, and this person is just, this is their introductory post. I don't remember if they wrote uh, any more or not, but this lady, probably most of you already heard about uh, this photographer on the chain, Vision. Uh, and this is actually his wife joining the platform. And uh, you can tell from the pictures, the pictures are really nice. So you can tell someone is an artist in the family. But anyways, um, in this post, uh, she was sharing her journey as a teen mom, a wife of a like, military wife. That's what she calls it. And how most of her life she's been just fulfilling uh, those two identities and now that the kids are growing up 
she feels like she needs to find herself. And time flies and life goes on and she started uh, going to a tranquil art classes. Oh wait, fluid, fluid art. And she feels like she's become, becoming more in tune with herself and perhaps reflecting on her life. And um, I feel like this stop, well, maybe not stop, but just a part of the journey, joining well shares, is just uh, another attempt to find herself in this tech world. I agree. She has a second post because I wanted to curate her for another project, but she already has not done voice uh, votes, so I couldn't. And I think she writes amazingly. She does amazing photography, and it's all very cute and and great at the same time. And I really enjoy this blog, and I will definitely follow it to see what's more to what she has more to offer. Yeah, for sure. I should have probably checked today, but I don't think I didn't do it today. But yesterday, I was just like going through um, tags trying to pick something, and I saw her. And that very day, her husband also posted that it was her birthday. And I was like, this is so meaningful. I might as well pick. I think it's a great intro post. And. Um... It's lovely to see such a, a handsome and sort of solid looking family as well. Solid meaning like together. You, you can tell they're, they're unified as a family should be. Um, and um, yeah, just beautiful to see it. Beautiful photograph showing that as well. Yeah, it's definitely a tranquilly deranged family. <laughs> I can certainly um, associate with, with the level of the kids leaving the house and almost borderlining empty nest and, and rediscovering everything that you've you dedicate so much time and effort into your children and once you fr you free up your hands um you have to rediscover yourself all over again and that is something that i can definitely associate with and i'm really always happy to see an introduction post because um it's the fundamental part of growing the platform is by encouraging people that do create good content um giving them the reason to stay I just realized that this post is over a thousand of WLS and payouts. I still have the tab open from yesterday, but it's only uh, 288 with my post. And I was like, hmm, this post didn't get much money at all. And then <laughs> I refreshed it and noticed that it's like over a thousand. That's amazing. Just means you've got good taste, Cotterin. No, they, they certainly deserve, deserve it for, for that, I think. Yeah, I feel like this post is just like really honest, you know, and not many people um, uh, feel the courage to admit that they really have um, not found themselves or in a way like they don't know what they're going to do now that the kids are all grown up because they spend so much time taking care of them, tending to their family, and I really like the honesty in it. Yeah, I get that too. I get that too. Um, okay, should we move on to Breeze, your first post? Yep, we are. Oh. Did I just do that? <laughs> Let's try again. Okay, so um, this is not a traditional South African thing. We don't celebrate Halloween at all. However, it's always fascinating. I always wonder if we just get random kids to run down the street and beg for sweets, how many of them are going to have a gun pointed at their head or, you know, be chased off by dogs. Or It's just a very foreign concept to me. Um, so this that, that was the first thing that drew me to this post, the novelty of, of um, something unknown. And um, it turned out to be a foodie post. <laughs> um, it's a brilliantly made little Halloween gingerbread house. Uh, another new thing that I learned was gingerbread houses are made normally over Christmas or other holidays. Um, but this lady, I assume, uh, made the gingerbread house as a Halloween. And she put a little step-by-step -step photography and everything in there that I just found was, I found it quite entertaining. Um, 
really drew me in I had my imagination flying off so <laughs> it's it was for me just a brilliantly put together post so um yeah let me know what you guys think i love the little pumpkin patch at the house and Isn't it a cute? funny thing is it's really really cute it's like so much details the funny thing is when i was little we didn't celebrate halloween either but it kind of it grew on us so now in latvia we celebrate halloween as well so you might see it soon you know some sometime in the future kids coming to you and begging for treats are egging your house if you don't have I doubt that strongly. We all oh, well. This the where I stay. It's all farm, so <laughs> kids would have to drive pretty far just to get to trick or treat house. It would cost them cheaper just to go to the shop than we would on gas driving from farm to farm. <laughs> but the kids like getting sweet. They like the adventure. You know, it's not about buying the sweets. It's about going trick or treating. And this is an amazing, amazing post about it. I like those. Sticks. What is on those sticks? Is the which sticks, Linda? To describe them. In the pictures. Wait. Let me check it out again. I was just checking. Um. While we're checking it out, I just wanted to say that um, you mentioned uh, Linda that in Latvia, uh, the Halloween is starting to become more popular. It's kind of the same thing uh, in Eastern Europe too, except there is no trick or treat into it. People just mainly um, go to bars, like Halloween themed bars, maybe dress up, and that's about it. I feel like it's more entertainment for older people than kids because when it comes to trick or treating, well, according to um, Orthodox Christians, they do it for Christmas, not for Halloween. Well, I did it when I was like 9, 10 years old. Before, no, but like 9, 10, 11, 12, sometimes that I went trick-or-treating and I always got bags of sweets. Even though most people were surprised, I still, you know, they didn't know what it was, but everybody in Latvia had sweets at home. Hmm, interesting, because this is not a thing like nobody would send their kids trick-or-treating in Russia or uh, Ukraine. It's... It's similar in the UK for like for as long as I can remember, Halloween was a thing that would be celebrated, and you might there might be parties and things. But I remember being persuaded to go trick or treating when I was ten. Um, so it was 1987, and um, some people were receptive to it, but a bit shocked, and some people were, were not receptive and a little bit offended. You would knock on their door and ask for something, and um, some people were downright hostile. Um, and we got shouted at by one person as well. I think it was a lady who might have been a, a Christian. Um, and some people in the street shouted at some old people because they saw what we were doing as well. And they, that their point was that if you ring someone's doorbell at night and they're not expecting it, that can be alarming. Um, so yeah, the whole the whole ringing doorbells was not a big thing. That that like everything else has spread now, so it's it's got normal in the UK, <laughs> I suppose. I I had the same, but I think because I'm a girl, I didn't have so much negative reactions. People would give me whole bars of waffles, like chocolate waffles. I don't know if you have these things, chocolate filled waffles, and they would be like whole bag of them <laughs> because I would be the only person going because it was I was going with friends really early, like you know I would go with some girlfriends. So I think people react different to girls. <laughs> Now, the nice thing as well, and this was something that I waited for all of you to comment first and then to prove my point through that, is this post has the ability to raise an insane amount of nostalgia. And it's a nostalgia that I've never even experienced, but I feel nostalgic about it. And that, that, is, that is a definite trait of a good quality post. If any post can make you feel something deeper than what you were expecting to once you've opened it, that's a good post. I agree with that. Certainly do agree. One thing I would add is that if somebody handed me a cookie that had trick or treat printed on it, I probably wouldn't eat it because you'd think that the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the trick or treat might be part of the cookie. And then you'd ask them, is this, well, is this actually a trick? And they would say, no, no, no. And you'd open it and the cookie's made with dog poo or something. Uh -huh. Like Harry Potter's booger flavored jelly beans on the on the train to Hogwarts. Yeah, you exactly. can always 
give to Sebastian to test for you. I can do. I can do. He would. Um, yeah, he would. He'd be fairly gung ho about that. I think a breeze. You mentioned uh, a, a feeling nostalgic when you go through that post, and I thought about it a little bit. And you know, even though perhaps not many of us experienced uh, Halloween as it's supposed to be experienced, like trick or treating and stuff, or eating um, candy, or even uh, having your parents uh, make the gingerbread house. But I feel like it's probably the childhood. This is what makes us feel nostalgic and just like being carefree and just taking in the holidays. Amen, sister. Um, shall we move on? Um, I just noticed Sevo is in the room, someone we haven't seen for a while. Hi, hey Sevo, how are you doing? Sevo was a, it's been a devoted listener for a long time and always entered our competitions when we ran them. Anyway, um, I'm going to move on to, yeah, I'm good, thank you, Sevo. Um, I'm going to move on to my post and then we can talk about the project that's going to be run. Look at this. This guy's regrowing his hair naturally. And um, I used to have beautiful, thick blonde hair. And now I've got not quite so thick, not quite so beautiful blonde hair. So I'm interested in anything that will let me have a little bit more of my hair back. And um, uh, I looked at this and thought, wow, look at all the things he's come up with to uh, to grow extra hair. Um, I probably won't do many of them. Um, um, though I do do yoga sometimes and I have noticed that if you do stuff that puts a lot of pressure in your head he's doing headstands there's I think there's a better one um, something called rabbit pose where you fold your head right underneath you and push it makes your face go bright red um, um, I think that um, pushes blood supply to your hair um, but for, for an older more discerning gentleman who who might also be a big part of well this is this is a nice a nice post like it like reading a copy of Esquire or GQ or something I'm not sure how you ladies will relate to this, though. I do headstands every night just to have lush hair. I used to do headstands when I was a kid. Like, um, a very long time ago. I haven't attempted to, to do it again. But, uh, yeah, if he loves it, let him have it. I think actually this guy is really cool. He posts not only about mm -hmm. not losing hair, but he also posted about climbing a mountain barefoot. Barefoot. He's really cool. I really like his blog. He might be having a midlife crisis. It could be that. Isn't it? We, should, uh, <laughs> we should ask him. Um, he's um, he's um, also got the idea that you, uh, you sting yourself with stinging nettles. Is that right? Oh, that's that's a really good thing to do. It, it has very much vitamins. That's what my grandma always taught me and my mom. So I'm on the I, I'm on the same page with this guy. Do you know how to touch a stinging nettle and not get stung? I don't know how to do it, but I remember this dude from Stimmet. He's just like raw vegan dude and just like all about uh, healthy lifestyle. Lifestyle? Why did they say love style? That's weird. <laughs> Your healthy lifestyle in uh, just like eating good and taking care of yourself. Yeah, he's very self conscious, I think. And I really enjoy reading his blogs. And he has a very soothing voice if you watch his videos. That voice is really amazing. He might even have a better voice than me. Well, that's um, it's very nice to say that I've even got a good voice because uh, cause I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. So thank you very much. But uh, maybe I'll, I'll head over and hear his. Or see if I can get some um, some tips. Hmm. Well, Nick, you were saying it's 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 more a male post, or you know how females would react. Um, thinning hair in females is is actually quite a big thing, and also everyone wants nice, thick, healthy hair. 
Um, there's a lot of natural oils that you can use as well. I know that um, South African Indian ladies use a combination of bergamot essence, which is a natural e extract, as well as avocado oil, massaging that into the scalp, and a lot of different essential oils that you can either take digest or or apply topically to to your hair to increase um, density and growth so yeah it's, it's not only a male thing i like think and i love this guy's enthusiasm like if you believe it you can achieve it kind of <laughs> i think was one of his subheadings in it it just makes you feel like you're at one of those motivational speakers you know it's like i want to shave my head just to grow it because of people like this Yeah, there's some there's some infectious, um, vivacious sort of energy for life there. You can see you can see it in his photo as well. Um, if you scroll down, I, I'm guessing he's. Does he say how old he is? He must be like late forties, early fifties, or something. But but looks in good shape. Um, looking healthy. He's talking about. I think he's he's vegan or, or close to vegan. Um, he's a nice example to uh, to look at for the uh, for the for a discerning gentleman as well. He wants to move through his 40s um, without starting to look like a troll. Do you think everybody who moves through their 40s becomes to look like a troll? I think it depends how you, how you, um, how you live your life. I honestly think that um, at some point, like most people can go through their life when they're young and they still look fine. You can eat burgers every day and you look fine and full of life. And then at some point you start to go downhill and you have to do more and more to still look like healthy and full of energy and um and what he needs to and still looks really good um but i've got friends who who in their late 20s early 30s who are working in the city of london and um they started to look awful like late 20s early 30s they I, they looked like they were going to die and then a lot of them um would have like a midlife crisis and then start to do like iron man races and triathlons and stuff um, but Is yeah, it's just a question of. Your know? Uh, no, no, more more people um, I've gone to school with than 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 uni friends, I think. But uh, I think there's there's there is like a early to mid thirties period where where lots of my friends got a bit fat and didn't care, and then they sort of then they sort of worried about it and, and got in shape again. Turtle project. If you lost your hair at twenty-four, you, you your veins must be so full of testosterone. You should be proud. <laughs> yeah, sure. That one left me almost speechless, but not completely. Um, Nick, one thing that I want to say on a side note is um, Samstone Hill, the author of this post post he's also a very old hand in the steamit community i think it was also one of the first people that i started following on steamit and he is he's known for being an interactive community member as well as really putting out great posts um you know he's really into this uh, wholeheartedly and he's one of the people that i'm really happy to see today that has also joined on whale shares i mean it's great that we are having brilliant content creators on, on both platforms. Okay, that's good to know. I'm not familiar with him, but I shall, um, I shall bear that in mind for sure. I think that takes us to the halfway point. So now, if you give me one second, talk amongst yourselves, I'm going to find my project post, which I hope you'll be impressed with. Let's be very critical of it. Let's hope this post doesn't feel bad as well. Have a look at that. Now, I had hoped to have different artwork for it by now. Though the artwork I use for this post, uh, for, the, for this project and for this show, it should sort of cross over. It's the same thing. It's designed to cross over. Um, but um, do have a read. But whilst you're reading, I'll talk you through it. A little bit. Um, one of my concerns all the time through Steamit was, well, through the early days of Steamit, was that everybody being recruited was from the crypt crypto sphere or generally te um, tech savvy people. 
And whilst new people were, were coming in, there wasn't a great big pull for new people. And so during my early days in Steemit, I thought, right, I'll do a poetry and short story competition. So I aimed as high as I could. For poetry, I wrote to Bob Dylan. you probably find the post from two years ago. And for a short story, I thought, who's the most preeminent writer on the planet in terms of like high literature? And I decided Salman Rushdie. So I wrote to him. Um, sadly, didn't get any reply. But the idea was going to be that they as sort of um, bastions of, of freedom would be would be delighted to judge a competition on the blockchain that couldn't be censored. Um, both of them encountered censorship in their careers, and um, and the whole thing would be great and it would bring loads of people in. Um, so I think the problem with that was that I perhaps aimed too high, but but the spirit of it was right. So what I've done is come up with this platform, which is this is not me. This is not my account. It's going to be it's going to be used um, to help everybody, hopefully. But what I want to do is set up a series of prizes judged by um, people, um, not, not to denigrate the Welshers community, but, but people who are already successful in what they're doing in the real world. So if you want a short story competition, um, for example, I've got someone lined up who I think is the best short story teacher um, that I've encountered. Um, he's a successful writer, um, and he um, he's taught a couple of people. I don't know anyone better than him working on the internet at all. Um, so I think he's perfect for this. Um, there's also a poetry competition, um, something called flash fiction, a few others. So I'm hoping to have between, yeah, music is going to be another thing. Um, I thought electronic music has, has won prize. Um, maybe something different as well, like a sort of um, acoustic, or we, we, we can we can finesse what the prizes are. But the point is, you have um, preeminent people in their field judging these prizes. You promote the prizes outside of Whale Shares. Um, you facilitate normal people getting in, normal people who are successful, talented, um, and you you entice them in with solid prizes. Now this is where. Um, well, shares and steam it and things like that are strong. They're, they're weak on adoption, but they're very strong on creating revenue. So the plan is to build up a stake with this, to maybe make a coin for it, to give people a coin for coming to listen, but also to hope to get upvotes. So you can offer, say, a minimum of $500 for a short story prize. Um, but if you can offer more, that's even better. You know, if you can offer $1,000, Guaranteed, backed by, you know, I will have to back it financially in the beginning, but backed by Wales giving up votes, you can get a couple of thousand people in um, just on the on the strength of that alone. And they will all tell other people. They're all in communities as well, all over the internet. So you, you this would make Welshers grow exponentially. If you imagine doing that with, um, with eight or ten different prizes, like photography, music, those kind of things, um, you could bring in a huge amount of highly creative people who wouldn't have come in to the blockchain um, quite as easily. Um, um, there's also corporate sponsorship as well. I've got a couple of friends from uni who've done financially very well. Um, they, they've sometimes got budgets to spend. Um, if you know anything about how corporate taxation works, companies have got a certain amount they can chuck away on advertising each week. Now, as Facebook and Twitter become extremely unfashionable, um, people might be looking to position themselves as bastions of freedom, um, might be wanting to throw some money. And um, a few thousand dollars is nothing to a corporation, especially if they'd have to chuck it in the bin of taxation anyway. Um, so yeah, magic internet money. What, here's, here's what you can do, Cotterin. You can say you will get magic internet money or you can guarantee them um, a dollar prize. Um, as a bare minimum, and you can tell them the price is going to go up um, as well, and they can see it going up. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, sorry, Nick, I was just going to say that uh, uh, somebody will have to uh, exchange the price, this, like the prize money, into fiat if you promise them like dollar value, or like you promise them some tokens that may and or may not potentially go up in value. We, I think this is something we have to think about what it, it is we are going to give them exactly. Yes, yes. No, don't worry. Well, my idea would be that slowly the value that's built up into the stake, if it's going to be the stuff that's going to be passed over to prizes, um, would be 
a stable coin, maybe not Tether or something, but, but there are other cryptos or you could put it in US dollars or sit it in a bank account or have it in a crypto wallet or something. You, you want it guaranteed where people can see it and you want to be able to explain to them there it is um, and you're definitely going to get it. Um, so yeah, all, all of that stuff has to be, it all has to be done very correctly. Um, um, hopefully it's also going to provide work for people who are interested in those spheres as well. So if you're a highly competent um, musician or someone who's had some solid success in poetry or something, then the initial entries need to be sifted through from, a, from all the entries to a long list. And then you narrow it down to a short list and then it gets passed to the, the judge because the judge won't look at 20,000 entries for something, a celebrity judge. You, you, have to, you have to work as a team to do that. And all those people will need a little bit of help as well for their time so hopefully it's going to become a, a big big hub of whale shares of energy and innovation and getting people in um, i'm shook you what you're you shook? know why you don't think i'm a celebrity i'm just sh <laughs> sorry i couldn't keep this back face <laughs> what are your celebrity in latvian latvian nursery rhymes no, I'm just a celebrity. I'm like Kardashian. I'm I'm famous, but nobody knows why. Well, I don't have a sex tape, though. So that might be the issue. Not yet, anyway. There's always there's always tomorrow. <laughs> okay, uh, but to be honest, I think this is a really great initiative to bring us to the next level. To bring the platform to the next level, you know, because we need some people who actually have have sway in in the real world to make even even cryptocurrencies in general. You know, at the second somebody <laughs> famous mentions cryptocurrencies, they boom because you know they have followers and everything. And I think it would help a lot if we actually got some real people and that actually have the positive reactions to these things. So we have to get these people in, give them the best experience possible. And we have to have, let them go out in the world and shout from the rooftops about it. Exactly, exactly. If you if you read down the post a bit, I've got the idea by the second year or maybe the third year to offer for for the most successful prizes five thousand dollars. Which, if you look at the success of Steam, it do you think like a, a decent account early on should be able to chuck that kind of money around? And also, again, if we can get like corporate sponsorship or something, well, once you get to that level. You're getting like twenty, thirty, forty thousand entries, I think, because you're you're getting to the, the you know, almost equal with the, with the biggest prizes in the world, um, and it's because crypto is so good at creating revenue. Um, so yeah, I think it puts us in a strong position, and then the barriers to entry become a lot less if you're able to offer a, a big amount of money. People who wouldn't be interested normally will sit and read your instructions, or will come to the to the Discord where we can walk them through by hand, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I'm um, I'm excited about this. I hope you all are too. And I'm going to post uh, regularly about it. I'm going to introduce some of the judges I've secured and talk about the the, the judges I'd like to get or, or the competitions I'd like to get for judges as well. Um, and the best thing you can do at the moment is to upvote it so this account becomes. Um, has some strength, has some backing to it, and the whole community will take it seriously. And then we can go and we can all go together and hassle whales as well to uh, to help us out. I just wanted to say something really quickly um, about this. Like, uh, so I, uh, as I understand it, you want to build this account to be worth at least five grand to give out as a prize, like to uh, take this money as a grand prize in two or three years. Is that? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I'm just trying to trying to trying to build it up. The prize can be done um, in many different ways because once you've got a significant judge, you can get you can get outside funding as well. But I do want to build um, a coin that can award listeners, can award people who are going to work for it, and can give it like a solid backing to the prizes as well. So we've got something to start off. If if a prize falls short, we can say actually we've got that covered. With the amount of crypto so so i'm not specific about the amounts 
Oh, okay. I just I was just wanted to to clarify that because I thought you were gonna use uh, the earnings summary account as the price, but now I see it's to back the coin. Okay, that's that's it. Breeze, please proceed. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, well, two things. Why is it every time I record the show that some form of sexual innuendo gets brought up, whether it's Linda's sex tape or someone's nudity or I don't know, fornicating monkey monkeys. <laughs> There's always something strange, and I was just wondering why that comes up. And secondly, I think this is an absolutely brilliant project, and congratulations, Nick, on taking the first step to creating something great for for the whole for the community as a whole. I I take my hats off to you. I have to clarify this though. I have no sex tape yet, but Nick offered me to help. But I think I'm gonna refuse that one. No, I didn't mean me. I just meant, I just meant. No, I'm not gonna say anymore. Hands up in this room if you want to help Linda make it sex tape. Catherine knows it because she filmed it. Please, please stop with the sex tapes, and can we go back to something else? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Silliness aside, we do get sidetracked sometimes. Um, thank you, Breeze, thank you, thank you. Breeze, thank you very much for your for your um, positivity, and um, um, next week um, I'm going to have more for you on this. But there will also be posts throughout the week, hopefully a couple of them, introducing judges and things, and we will slowly um, we will slowly refine the details but for the moment let's move back to because we're, we're running out late um let's move back to curation so we'll jump back to linda again me and again i'm not prepared wait i'm gonna be prepared can somebody do a drum roll while i get prepared here it is and i chose it for a very very specific reason you can see in the, I would like you to guess, but you can see it in the name that it's the Baltic goddess. And this picture is so spot on about Latvia and Lithuania and Baltic spirit. And I just had to, when I saw it, it, it felt like home to me. And this photographer is really good. I mean, I saw a lot of his pictures. And even though this was the best one, from the, all of the latest pictures for me because I'm homesick, obviously, so I had to choose it. Oh, guys, can you hear me? Yes. I thought I disappeared. Uh, and I had to choose it because I was born next to the sea and I think this, you know, it's very easy to take a picture. It's a little bit harder to make a profession, more professional picture and it's I think it's extremely hard to actually be a professional photographer know how to edit it and then there's that next level when you see something and you're like i feel it and i think this is this photographer makes me feel it so i'm very impressed and it's like home this is like i would say latvian and lithuanian and estonian pagan spirit because i mean the white dress could be a little bit different color it would be more pagan but it's perfect otherwise. Yeah, I like this picture a lot. And oh, wait, Linda, did you finish uh, presenting the book? Yeah, I did. I'm just not sure. I, <laughs> I. Okay, I'm just making sure that it didn't catch you up in the middle of <laughs> your speech. I was just gonna quickly say that uh, uh, yesterday, when I was going through posts, and I saw so many of his uh, photographs because I went through the photography tag for a little while and I was going to pick one of his posts because the pictures they do look very, very good. But because there's not much info other than the um, exit data from uh, from camera, I didn't pick his post. But I do enjoy the photography. I just wish there was like a little bit more than just photo, but, but it is like very well just justify it because the photography is I think yes I agree with you there I think there should be at least a little bit of a caption you know to make you feel it for me it was because I know it like you know I know it because it's my 
life basically where I come from it's the same it, the sea looks the same and I understand the woman she looks so local to me you know and uh, for me I understand it and that was the only reason I was I, I was a little bit hesitant about choosing him because he doesn't put any captions there but I love the photos yeah his artwork is uh, photography artwork is really good I like both editing and the composition of this shot oh, well yeah we already mentioned like not many words, but I mean it's okay. But like perhaps just one or two more pictures to that, and there no words would be needed, you know, to complete it. Yeah, even that, I agree. Yeah, that would be cool if he was here. I don't think he's here. I'm not sure. Are you here, X Men? <laughs> Well, the one thing that compensates for the lack of word is, um, firstly, well, that the picture does speak for itself, as Linda stated clearly. And secondly, that he put in the, the camera details, which a lot of photographers neglect to do. He put the type of camera it was taken with, the lens that was on, um, and, and the basic settings, which is brilliant. Because if you're looking at a picture, um, especially if you're a pi aspiring photographer these are important things for you to know in order to grow for yourself um, that's great um, the one thing that that I found um, slightly not off-putting about the post but um, not in place was the fact that he still left at the bottom he neglected to take out the Riweku which is great I mean everyone's all for cross-platform posting but at the same time, the devil is in the detail. Um, but a brilliant post nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to say that I also uh, include, well, most of the time, the camera and lens, and lens that I'm using for my pictures. But I feel like this is not the most um, uh, important info. I feel that it comes to um, to that, like the exit data, the camera settings would be more important if you're trying to learn from a picture rather than just uh, the camera model and lens. I think, you guys, you should listen to Katrin because her posts are amazing and I think she has the perfect post of photography because she makes me hungry almost every time or makes me love cats and I don't even like cats but I try. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. You've been so sweet today. Only today. No, we are all open for for criticism, guys. You are free to criticize everything, just like we criticize the fact that this person should have some captions. I also think a little bit of formatting would work, mm -hmm. or more pictures, like Kotrin said. There's mm -hmm. also always... I think it's quite good to say that something needs to be improved because that way you can grow as a person, as an author, as a as a somebody who posts. So go ahead of it if you have any suggestions. Constructive criticism, constructive. Just criticizing something is I don't I don't like that. But if you have constructive criticism, that's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, for instance, like whenever I do my recipes, I include a lot of pictures and. Uh, well, the recipe itself, but if I'm posting just like one or two pictures of something that I don't really uh, know what to talk to say about, I just include the camera settings. Or well, maybe somebody will wanna see what they are. But um, yeah, like I, ever since I started uh, reading the settings, people said for their cameras and they take a picture to help me to understand a lot about what I'm trying to achieve too. So if a photographer does that, that that's awesome. Cutest to that. I think that's a beautiful picture. I'm not, um, I'm not very good with photography, so I, I can't talk um, like Cotterin can about all like all the the exit details or whatever it is. But what I am interested to know, Linda, is um, this is a Baltic goddess um, with your with your eye for them, how. It disappeared. Nikki? Can you guys hear me? Yes. So it's next. Mm hmm. But, anyways, for sure, like 
for sure this picture is not the only picture that he got from the photo shoot like one more and i think the post put this set and he would be more like oh nick 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 he disappeared again yeah i agree May more pictures a little bit polished uh polished formatting and i think it'll be perfect but I, I still thought I fell in love with this one picture because it's so me. Yeah, it is a good photo. All of his photos that I looked at last night, they were all good. Like all of those uh, portrait photographies, like ladies, they they really do look good. Yeah, and he mostly photographs Lithuanian women because you can you can really tell. Like I've traveled a lot and I, I can really the face for example the one that he photographs the baltic goddess she could be latvian but there are some women who look really little look what woodsy said this is so funny to me woodsy woodsy always says something funny <laughs> thanks <laughs> Well, maybe we continue on without Nick if he's not here. Oh, he's right. here. I got, I got kicked off for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, so did you, did you hear my question? No, tell me your question. I rambled on for about a minute asking a really short, what should have been a short question. Why is that picture particularly Baltic rather than uh, Scandinavian or Russian? The sea is very. When you go to the sea in Latvia or Lithuania, it's the same sea. When you go to my home town. It would look the same, and that the sea and the spirit, like her dress, how it's moving, like so free. It's the whole pagan red religion. I think in the whole three Baltic countries, we like to be free, even though if we are depressed, but we like to be like that's that's the like the soul of the whole people. You know, it feels like it. You'll see when you come live here in Latvia. Well, there. I'm not there yet. Okay. I'll, I will um, I will reserve my judgment. Because I can't... Yeah, I can just about... I sort of see what you mean, but I, I can't put my finger on it exactly. Okay, brilliant post. Well done. Who's next? Me next. Oh, I've got one more thing to say just before you start, Cotterin. Um, Moon Unit has now, um, who, who took the, the that post, has um, also, oh, did he do that one? Hold on, let me see. What happened? Sorry, I got confused. Go ahead, go ahead. No, Wang J, I don't speak Japanese, um, but... um. Anyways, here's my uh, second post, and I remember earlier this year I already presented uh, a post by this person, the booster uh, from Steemit. Then we were still picking from Steemit posts, and he just recently joined Whale Shares. Uh, let me tell you how long ago um, that was. Um, four days ago. Yeah, so he is new here, and he's a photographer and haiku poet from Japan. Well, he's actually an American, but he now lives in Japan. And um, I picked his post because I love how he formats his post. Not only uh, he translates all of the haikus by himself, if, if he shares the ones that were not written by him, he also includes, attaches like this uh, traditional Japanese painting to the post. And I feel like all of it combined gives this post well, not this post, but all of his posts, like these ambience where you can picture yourself being the character in the poem or the narrator of it. This one in particular is talking about uh, going to a, to a hotel um, and having the moon light your way by the show. And I, looking at this picture, I can see myself being this old, this old man just like walking in in the night to my hotel trying to crash there. <laughs> yeah, all in all, I think it is an amazing post. And I encourage everybody to read that translation and look at the painting and just kind of kick back and 
close your eyes and think about it for a second. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, six word stories. What's that? That's when you write just six words and it tells a story. You know, the popular guy said something selling baby shoes never used, and that's like a story, and the haiku is similar, but you kind of get what it said. Oh, yeah, I understand what you said, but for me, haiku is just, I love how simple they are and how short they are, but with the simplicity, they hold so much meaningful, so, so many meaningful things. Like, I, I get a lot from haiku. I read the, like these three lines, and I have like this, the whole story made up in my head. Haiku is your guilty pleasure. Haikus are awesome. They're not my guilty pleasure. I think it's just pleasure. I'm not guilty. That's a, a wistful quality to them as well, isn't it? What's that? I I always think there's a haikus, there's a wistful quality, it's light and airy and a little bit lost, a little bit sort of, yeah, I think wistful is the right word. For me, for example, for this one, I really like this, the one that he, he writes in this post, the culture and presented, the moon's guidance, this way, please, to an end. And, you know, with the picture together, it immediately makes you come up with your own story, you know, you, you've got the base from the haiku and your imagination, at least mine, automatically my mind draws up other pictures, you know. Yeah, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, Linda. I love, like, look, haikus are traditional Japanese po poetry and he always includes a traditional Japanese painting uh, to um, accompany the poem and it just, really gives you like this real experience personally i was only i think about a year year and a half ago i was introduced to haikus for the first time and at first i thought it was it was silly it was you know simplistic and silly and um until i actually tried to write one myself <laughs> and i found myself having absolutely infatuation with people that can so easily get put it together um <laughs> darren <laughs> and the way that the the post is compiled as well i i definitely can see why you chose this one for curation well done awesome actually in this post he speaks about uh looking down on hackers until he uh tried to write one too like if you see at the bottom of the post, he says how pointless it is. Anything can be haiku if you can count. Well, this is one of the first ones that he wrote in a, because he thought they were stupid, but uh, they're not stupid. They're, they're actually very cool. Well, even that one that he, that he wrote, the, the how pointless, even that one is a whole cool haiku. Even if it's not true. Yeah, for sure. I don't think Nick likes haiku. I was just thinking how much I love that that one about the um the moon, the first one. Um, um but they, they've they've always got that same slightly lost or slight no, wistful, I'm trying to I can't put my finger on it. Anyway, they've got the they've all got that same sort of feel and it's it's almost a, a little bit sad. You don't normally get a happy haiku, do you? There's a, there's a, a, a lost feeling or a, or a tailing off feeling. Um, and that's that's not, how can I say? I like it, but I don't enjoy it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, perhaps. I haven't read a lot of, um, a lot of uh, happy haikus either. Most of them are about uh, seasons, season change and maybe like the weather and just like how this person is walking to an end. Yeah, well, um, that's haikus for you. Maybe it's because it's easier to write an impactful story, short story, when it's negative, you know? Because if you write something happy, it's like childhood memories that you have more negative memories, like the first time you fell down and bruised your, your, your knee or something, you know? 
because they are more powerful. That's why maybe they are so sad because they're short and they have to leave the maximum input possible. In this particular one, I don't think it is sad. I just, I'm not kind of feel content after reading that. Like... Yeah. This one, I agree. It's, uh, it's quite neutral. I think this one is what you think. Like, if you think negatively, it's going to be negative for you. And if you think positively about it, it's going to be... And, you know, I think we affect those things as well, like how we see them. Because everybody has a different view of stories or, or songs or something. It's probably even the same with haiku. Yeah, for sure. Because if you think of it, this could be either like a person walking places all day long. But actually, Basho, he was... Um... He was just like a life traveler. He didn't really have a home of his own. He was just on the go for almost his entire life, this boat. And most of his haikus are about things that he's been seeing on the go. Well, I just think about that, like he had a long day walking places, checking stuff out, and now he's like going to sleep in a hotel or if you're a different person, you may be thinking, hmm, somebody kicked him out. He has to go to an inn now. <laughs> how, about, how about this? As, uh, I put up a definition of wistful in case anyone doesn't know the, the term. The, the other thing is about haikus, they always seem so open at the end. You never get a haiku that has like a closed or finished feeling. It always sort of... Yeah, I suppose, like you said, Katrin, it asks a question. I, I see it a bit differently. It, it, it leaves the situation open. Um, I'm, I'm also envious of the formatting in that post because I've never learned good formatting, and now it's too late. Yeah, they are wistful. It's just like, you know, they are opening the door for you to decode like what this means in your head and whether or not you can apply it to yourself or maybe think about something. I think this is the magic of haiku. Okay, brilliant choice. Well done. Um, I'm surprised you didn't pick a food post this week. Um, Breeze, your turn, unless yeah. you've got something to say. Just a quick thing. Um, I'm going to try for next week's show to write you a non-wistful, closed haiku. How's that for a challenge? Um, Katrin, are you going to join me? Wait, what you uh, cut up? <laughs> I said you should join me and then we could both write a closed off, non wistful haiku for Nick for the next show. And recite yeah, we them. Can try. We can try. I've never written one. It's, it's been a long time since a woman has written me a poem. Um, certainly, I don't think I've ever had two writing me a poem. Linda, do you want to join in? Make it a. Three ladies Sorry? writing me poems. <laughs> Do you want I'm to write a poem for me too? Following. <laughs> Can I just write a poem without restrictions? Because I'm not good at following these. Of course you can. I never learned to count my syllables and stuff because I was on holiday when they taught it in elementary school. It's a silly thing, but it's very true. I never learned it because I wasn't in elementary school back then. So kids, elementary school is important. I don't know about middle school, but all the basics, they're important. <laughs> well, Linda, then just write a, a satirical, non-whimsical one stanza poem. That should be simple. Okay, so homework for next week, girls. Poem for Nick. Um, <laughs> and on that note, we will move to Breeze's post, I think. No, it has to be Linda's. No, wait. No. <laughs> okay. I'm stupid. No, Breeze, you don't get to present today. I present three posts today. <laughs> okay, you guys done fighting? <laughs> right, so the next post that I chose today is by Giant Bear. Um, also an old steam at hand. Um, she is an educator. Now, I don't have too much to say about the post in itself. It's a brilliantly written, very simple, short story, easy reading, um, and she does a lot of these she also is part of the of some education um initiatives on welsh's and and steemit which is brilliant and um 
does a lot of educational posts, really an author worth following. And um, I always find the, the short stories interesting, such an easy read and, and leaving you wanting just a little bit more, um, which I think is a great attribute to a short story. So this is this was the last post that I chose. And, and without giving away the story itself, it's there's not a lot much more to say other than you know, take your time, go read the post and, and give it the love and support that it deserves. Yeah, Ruth, you love to pick uh, um, stories and fiction and Linda does and Nick does. I, I find it so hard to just like uh, go through a post and read it if there's not many photos. <laughs> but I will give this one a go because you compliment it so much. I know it's more difficult and I know it's like on a whim of faith that you're going to go upvote and reshare this post and, and go read it later because, because you just love me that much. But at the end of the day, it's, it's also as difficult as it is. It's just as valuable to, to reward post um that's that's based on story lines lines writing etc you know that is that's just as important as um supporting people that does post that's easier to to curate in my opinion so yeah i'm i'm sorry katrin no it's fine don't be sorry i mean i can read it and i can do it i'm just saying that on my uh free time I'm very, very not likely to go look and give the post a read entirely, you know, because I just always get distracted or wrapped up in doing something else. I'm just like in certain and I never finish, but uh, this doesn't look <laughs> very long to me, so I'll do it. I'm just scanning through that whilst I was writing my IQ from Moon Unit. So uh, tell me if you like it. Anyway, hold on. I've just got to keep reading briefly. Okay, I like I like that post. It's short. It's sweet. It's a story, but it doesn't trip. Like one of the one of the downside sometimes is in in these posts is if you get like a, a 20 page post you don't always want to read that it might be good it might be interesting it might be a great effort um <coughs> but it it might not be you know of professional quality or something and you might think yeah this is all right but i quite like to get a uh, a short a short snappy um a post and she's she's got a solid sort of writing style so um so i think that's a good choice breeze now I know why you don't come visit my blog, Nick. You don't just like us people who write. God, when you're not talking, you're really writing 50-page stories. It drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, Linda does do a lot of writing. Like, she creates solid posts, but I think that if she wrote it into couple parts you know maybe it will help her like be a, little, a bit more consistent because she didn't post all of it at once and uh, also just like keep people uh, waiting for more well I'm, I'm not saying like sitting on her post because they're great but it is a lot there's a lot in uh, you could you could just break it into a couple parts Linda <laughs> God people telling me how to live my life I'm gonna stick to my chat I'm gonna be annoying with my long posts, guys, just because I've I found my aesthetics for Welshers and I'm sticking to it. It's too late to change it. It's too late. You would have told me this three, four months ago, Kautzerin, it would be okay, but now it's too late. <laughs> you guys, you heard one of Welsh's absolutely brilliant writers who is in the audience's feelings. I, I feel that you guys need to apologize. Uh, Vivian? We love writers. We all love writers. It's just difficult to give an on-the-spot curation of the posts sometimes. Um, but we love you. We love all your posts and all your writing. And thank you for being here. Now, I apologize, people. 
I, sh I should clarify, no, yes, um, um, I, actually, I absolutely love fiction and stories and writing. I, it's certainly actually my main thing, but you've got to bear in mind that I have to scan, like for a long time, I scan through post promotion and try and read everything. And if I get a long post that's like like 20 or 30 pages, remember that's, that's I might have to re read a lot of those. So sometimes what I meant was, it's very refreshing when Breeze picks a piece of, piece of fiction that's quite short. And I should also say that I, I'm a very great admirer of flash fiction, where you take something and condense it down to like three, 500 words. So um, so that's what I meant. It was certainly not a dig at long writing. Well, I, I was teasing Linda a bit because she, she um, her posts are quite long. I'm a very easily offendable person. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Cut to it, I don't talk to you anymore. Okay, that was not true. Well, I think... <laughs> I think it's true because I have to admit that I don't often read stories, long stories. But that is only because I love reading, but I only don't read them because I t it takes me so long to write my own ones. <laughs> and I kind of, on, on Bell Shares, I try to find an escape. So I don't, you, you know, you kind of, what you do, you try to find an escape from it and you look for something else. So I usually look for music, I look for pictures on wheelchairs, but I do love and I do enjoy and I do appreciate a long story, especially since I know that it's hard to structure, write an amazing story. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the thing is there are so many of us, four of us, and we all have like different things and I feel like we can, uh, um, we can embrace a uh, wide, broad spectrum of different posts well i'm looking for things where uh like where my interests lie i like photography and i like haikus for instance and i like a good food photography so i'm more likely to pick that linda likes to read she, or she likes to listen to music she she is more likely to pick something in that niche and i i think it's great because we all like different things we are all different people and we can cover a lot of different topics. That's true. Wait, I, I was just reading a comment and somebody said, I look for my car keys on wheelchairs and I interpreted it like, I'm going to buy a car when I have enough wheelchairs. Sorry, guys, I, I just had to go off topic. You know me, I'm sorry. It's all right. No, it's uh, it's an understandable digression. Um, so yes, we're all suitably contrite about what well, is me again. It's what I said, so I take it all back. Um, but um, yes, no. Um, on the positive side, we all like that post. We all thought it was short and sweet and lovely. And um, and and keep doing the writing. Oh, and okay. So now it's time um, to give you some more. <laughs> to give you all some free um, um, upvote tokens from Krista. So. What do we need to do? Normally, you send me your address. We're changing that. You're going to write directly to Krista with your BitShares address, but you also need to answer a question. And um, what you need to, the question you need to answer is, why is Krista the queen of whale shares? So send your oh, answer to her. She doesn't like to be called queen. She doesn't like to be called queen because of well, history. That's Why is Krista the crazy of the platform? She's, she's not the queen? Well, my question is, why is she or why isn't she? Why is she or why she, isn't she the queen of Welsh shares? Well, she's not because she's pink um, and not red. No, you're, you're all missing the point. <laughs> this, has, this has to get in a direct message to her. So you can all communicate with her individually. Why Krista is or isn't the queen of Welsh shares. And also put your bitch as address and then she will send you some goodies. I hope that is that makes sense. That's going to spam poor Krista so much, isn't it? Because she already gets so many messages. Now we spam her even more. Just crazy. Well, hold on. I've, I've, I've arranged it with Krista. So, um, so she, I think she secretly she likes the punishment. She pretends she doesn't, but she does. <laughs> well, I would say don't copy this from me, but she is not a queen because she's not an empress that dictates everything. She lets everybody have their opinions. Well, and you could say, I think she's the benevolent queen of Wales, Chance. I, th I think 
Lindsay, you're, you're trying to answer the question for people, and I was trying uh, to keep it you open. You see? Krista is saying she's no queen. She's the crazy mod lady. But then that can inform the answers that people are going to send in that direct message. Anyway, in the anyway, to, to, to clarify what you have to do, you have to send a message to Crazy Krista with your witch as address, and you have to say why you think she is or she isn't the Queen of Welsh as. Obviously, she and, and all all her um, <clears throat> all her female supporters here have made it clear they don't think she is, but you might disagree with that. But anyway, put that in a message to her with your bitch as address, and she should send you something for free. Yeah, do that now. Um, and now we have got my post, which is the last one. One second, my computer's slow. There we go. No one did a food post this week, which I think was um, was lucky because I've picked one. Um, I'm not a vegan, but I admire veganism um, very much. And I love picking vegan posts because it gives me a sort of virtuous feeling. But I would like to step towards veganism in the future. I'm always proud of myself when I have a day without meat. Um, this looks like a beautiful recipe, um, nicely formatted. Um, it looks light, fluffy and tasty. And um, oh, and also Moon Unit has informed me he's now a witness as well. Um, so, so he's looking to be kind of a big deal on the Welsh platform. Um, um, but anyway, I thought this was a great post, and it looks yummy, and um, it's something that I would like to eat, and uh, that's that's always a good sign with a post. Um. I came across a blog and it's called, um, well, it's not on Simon or Will Shares. It's called Unconventional Baker, if anybody wants to pick, uh, check it out. And it's a collection of vegan desserts, mainly vegan or vegetarian desserts. And they have so many beautiful cheesecakes like that, made with the same ingredients, uh, soaked nuts. And, um, and I've always I've always been wondering how they taste, and I never tried. So maybe I will um, save this recipe and give it a go one of these days whenever I get a hold of the ingredients that I needed. Because I've had raw vegan desserts before that I made myself. Basically, just had to freeze them overnight, and they were delicious. I didn't even use any sugar. Um, I, uh, I only used maple syrup for them, and it felt good eating sweets that were actually good for them. I like desserts, any kind of desserts. They can be vegan. I don't discriminate. I eat them all. So this is an amazing post. I honestly love the fact that it's colorful. Um, <laughs> I had a, a vegan boss quite a few years ago, and um, I would normally cook on lunchtime for, for the office people. Um, and she would insist that I cook for her too. But the problem was cooking vegan um, tended to be a very big challenge for me initially. And the food that she would insist on me preparing for her was normally excessively pale. And she was excessively pale. And, and I just, I think subconsciously make the, made the relation be, between the fact that if she had more colorful food, she would have more color <laughs> in a way. And um, I started preparing a little bit more vegan food with, with, um, with some color. And it's great to see in this post. Um, I love vegan food that's got color. <laughs> and that's the one thing that I'm stuck on right now. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Here in the list of the ingredients, uh, I see coconut oil. And oh, recently I learned when my husband told me that this is one of the unhealthiest oils you can eat because of the amount of some fats in it. And I'm gonna think of something else to use instead of that now, even though I do have a jar of coconut oil that I haven't been using for like <laughs> half a year now. Is chocolate enough color? Uh, I, 
even even chocolate it bothers me if there's if there's nothing to break the solid chocolate color <laughs> there needs to be a contrast with it well in baking for example um but chocolate is a color and you get different shades of 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 chocolate which you can blend into a marble type topping if you really need to so yes i i think it is it's not I'm vegan though because i have a a kill why is it not vegan if it's pure chocolate it, because there's normally milk in um white chocolates but doesn't white chocolate also have I milk? can hear you please is it me can you hear me no i can hear you oh i said it, it's not vegan because of the the milk content unless you get a milk free chocolate yeah exactly you can get milk free chocolate it's not that hard these days especially if you go to a normal store in germany but there's a very easy recipe you just take del dates hazelnuts coconut milk and chocolate you you uh, grind together the dates and the hazelnuts and you pour to, uh, on top chocolate uh, mixed with coconut milk and it's amazing and it's very easy and you don't have to bake it it's amazing 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 cake now that I'll definitely try <laughs> Before I end the show and we take the mics off and all have a chat with if we feel like it or, or somebody sings or something, um, I would like to mention that I once had a fantastic chocolate mousse made with avocado and cocoa powder and nothing else. And it was, it was, I couldn't tell it was different from a, from a, a traditionally made sugary chocolate mousse at all. Um, it was amazing. So maybe that's a thing. That's, that must be the easiest chocolate mousse to make, an avocado, cocoa powder. Probably if you want it more sweet, you could add sugar or honey or something, but just those two things, the texture is identical to a, to a heavy chocolate mousse. It's beautiful. Oh, God, that looks amazing. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm Catherine, stop it, stop it. These are uh, uh, vegan desserts that I was talking about. I posted the link slightly above those. I'm going to rent baker.com if you guys want to look into them. This girl, like, she creates beautiful food. <laughs> that, is, that is really mouth-watering. Um, Vivian is asking what the flower is doing on the top. What's that? I said Vivian in the audience asked what the flower is doing on top of such a beautiful cake. You can eat flowers, can't you? I, I grow nasturtions and another one, I can't remember its name, um, for salads, for example, in my you, garden. You can eat mm, Peppery, flowers. nice. Yeah, edible flowers, you can eat them, or if you cannot eat them, people just use them for dessert. But uh, they, uh, these are pictures by, by unconventional baker. So these are not mine, it's just like couple pictures from her blog, and like those are vegan, so check them out. Anyway, what I'm going to say now is um, that I think we can officially close the show, but open the mics and turn this into... Um, so if anyone wants to speak out loud or say anything or sing, if you don't sing, Krista might or Linda 